So I know they're a little more grindy than usual, but Flem from Rhode Island. It's just one of those bands, man. I never did end up tracking down an original. I've always had like a tape tape of it. It's getting pretty faded though here. So on one side it's Flem. It's consumed by the dead, yeah. And Immortal Fate, Faceless Burial on one side. And then the other side is Human Remains, Chemical Life. Leash Nyan, huge Leash Nyan. Sub Gregory, and Deteriorat. Vile Disfigurement, oh man. So that's my introduction to Flem with some tape trading. Oh, I got some, uh, there's... See, in the Leash Nyan, I'd like to chat with uh, Roy Fox of Necro Harmonic. But, uh, got some addresses. I still got some addresses. Because Roy Fox used to help he used to help with promoting bands and just you know doing merch and zines and just everything too right so he was helping out with uh, Leash Nyan and uh, you know doing a little distributing with these guys so it's the Louisiana Swamp Grind Flam, Jimmy Fleet and it's cool too because uh, one of the reasons why in my band, Mangled, we were like a grind, death metal grind band or whatever, but Flem had has a, med a medley of uh, like noise with some hilarious music and stuff like that. So that kind of just gave me a spark to, you know, just play around. Like, you know, how it Zoom did... Uh, Material Girl, uh, and just stuff like that, right? Just funny renditions or whatever. So then we ended up doing Honeymoon Suite, New Girl Now. So we do the beginning, you grind, the little, the little lick in the middle, grind. Yeah, man, how's everybody doing tonight? How, how, how are we? Again, I got the, the Zivit. That's what's going on tonight. And we got phlegm in the background. And uh, we, got, uh, we got a band. Let's see if it works. to you Thomas we've already talked to you Thomas it's pretty loud well hello there what up <laughs> look at that look you guys have good internet connection that's fantastic See everybody. Nice Pleasures. How are you? How are you? How's it going? It's doing well. Yeah, living in quarantine. Where, 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 where do you guys reside? Uh, well, th this, uh, this component's up in uh, Santa Barbara right now. 
I'm in uh, Orange County. Okay. All right. So you you guys get to hang out together, but you're all alone. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I haven't seen the band in a while, so it's kind of weird. <laughs> 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 no. Right on. So this is Depraver. Uh, names, everybody. What are your names? I'm Violet. Right here. The uh, sewagist. The sewagist. So, how long has the band been together? Well, we've been, uh, we've been around for like the first iteration was in like 2010, 2011, and then uh, we kind of went our separate ways for a little bit. Uh, Due to certain circumstances, and then uh, now we're uh, back in action uh, since what 2017? 18. And, uh, 18. So, yeah, so we're back at it trying to release uh, a lot of new material. Well, because you guys are like, it's, it's, it's like a fresh band still, right? Two years later? Yeah. Yeah, well, and initially we thought it was just like it. 2012 or whatever, we thought it was going to be just like a one-off thing because we sort of knew we were going separate ways. Um, circumstances brought me back to California, brought Violet to California, and uh, it seemed like a really good opportunity to do this again. Sweet. So you guys are working on new stuff or the stuff is already done with Thomas of Redefining Records? Well, a, a, a couple a couple things happened. So, uh, you know, a couple years ago, we we released uh, self released our Supper in the Coffin EP, um, and Thomas caught wind of that, uh, and he re released that on CD uh, with our first EP from 2012, um, and we just self released uh, this guy, uh, Martyrs to an Absent Savior. Um, Initially, initially we thought this one was going to be uh, a couple splits, um, and so uh, Thomas wasn't involved with this one, but our, our hope is to start uh, cranking out the material for the full length in the near future, um, and ideally that's going to end up on Redefining Darkness. Sweet. Yeah. Sweet. So, Violet's on bass. Sorry, you, you, I'm sorry, I, I, I forget you everything. Drums. You're on drums. Right, and then and yeah. that, that that leaves you with the uh, the harpsichord, right? Exactly. Yeah. Right. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, guitar, guitar and vocals. Guitar. <laughs> so, how would you guys describe your style? For anybody that hasn't heard you guys yet, Depraver, you know, obviously the name's been around for almost ten years now. So, what do you what what are you trying to deliver to everybody nowadays? Um, we prefer the term death assassination metal. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I like that. See that it, now that that creates the the interest because you're like, okay, well, what does that mean? It's not it's not old school death metal. It's not caveman death metal. It's not technical death metal or brutal. You're talking about what? Did, say it again. Death assassination metal. Death assassination metal. So we're starting a whole new genre here, right on. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Yeah, you know, like, uh, genres aren't really our concern. Uh, people <laughs> use terms like death grinding thrash or, or other stuff like that to describe us. Um, you know, like, de definitely a big chunk of where we come from is is old school death and thrash. Right on. How old How old's everybody? Um, I'm 25. 33, 30 or two. Okay, you're still youngies. You're okay, all right. That's cool. That's cool. But you're, but 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 you're you're capturing a good sound that doesn't. It's not. You're not. You're not rehash. It doesn't sound like you're rehashing anything. There's there's mixes of everything. You'll you'll hear like some old pestilence, and then you'll hear like like a sadis or an incubus, and then you'll hear like a like a little bit of venom, and then you'll hear possessed, and like you're kind of like all over the gamut. Um, and I'm assuming because everybody likes all that styles of music. Yeah, it's really about fusing a lot of those key sounds from the like old school. It's just you know we all love that shit, so it's that 
we don't feel like it has to be one one thing or the other. It's just you know what sounds good to us. Yeah, and the, and the real focus is on trying to write write some good songs, right? Um, what, whatever the genre label someone wants to put on it. Right. So how long how long has everybody been playing? Fifteen years. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I guess I uh, I guess I started playing guitar in what like sophomore junior year of high school. So that's got to be what two thousand two or two thousand three. Um, I, I hurt myself a while back, so I didn't play for a like, big chunk of time, but um, back into it strong now. Right on. Um, <laughs> I've been playing like two years. How long? <laughs> like two years. Oh, wow. See? It, all, 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 yeah, it, it's awesome. That's great. That's fantastic. So how did you, yeah. so how did Violet, how did you get into death metal then? to New York and I met this guy out there besides metalcore and then I started getting really into it because when I was younger all I knew about was like metalcore and stuff and then I lost interest in that like really fast but um yeah I guess yeah then when we moved here from New York um they needed a bassist and I was just at the practice space all the time anyway, and I was like, well, like, I'll, I'll learn bass for you guys. <laughs> so. Yeah, and she can do it quick. Um, it, it's probably the, the best decision we've, we've made as a band. <laughs> right on, right on, right on. Um, and you, uh, when, when did you, I'm pointing at you, not you. <laughs> when, when was the turning point for you in death metal? When, like, when did you find uh, it? What, what, what was that band? Are, are you asking Sue just over here? Yes. N no, no, no. I'm asking you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, I, well, I guess, like, when I was first getting into, into guitar stuff, um, you know, it was more like, oh, I want to learn how to shred, and, you know, you, you sort of, I took the the typical path, you get into Black Sabbath, you get into Priest, you, you know, you find your way to Slayer, and and after you cross that threshold, then, uh, you know, then the world of the underground opens up to you, and, uh, and you know, it, it took me a long time to get there, actually, but uh, then when I did, I, I sort of found that, for me at least, there's there's that golden era of about, like, 83 to 93 that is... It is the shit that I'm really in love with. Yep. No, oh, totally. Totally. So what so what would you say was the first death metal band that you heard that all of a sudden it was like there's a growl and something's different here? Uh ugh. uh I mean it is probably Seven Churches. Um was like the the, the first thing because you know, like it, it, it actually took me a while to uh acclimate myself to the, the harsher style, right, of, of death metal, and so, like, Possessed had enough that was still thrash, um, but was sort of, like, showing, showing some glimmer of, you know, the sort of, like, darker, more disgusting sound. Of course. And Sewagist, what's up with you? Um, yeah, like, high school was, like, it was, you know, Slayer and Canada Corpse and that sort of thing got really into that and then you know just didn't a lot of my friends were you know into that whole like metalcore thing i was like oh no i, I really like blast beats and stuff and then you know found found you know ended up finding stuff like suffocation and morbid angel and that was just you know the rest is history you know morbid angels key for me man oh yeah is that is, is that your go-to band yeah, I mean, like, the guitar playing and the drums are just out of this world. What eras? Alters. Alters and my Alters, yeah. <laughs> it's always alters, eh? And, and, and you, you can't deny it because it is, like, the first album or whatever. I'm a Covenant fan, too, though. I like Covenant. Oh, I love Covenant, man. I, I ended up seeing that on tour. Uh, it was... Um, it was create. It was Paradise Lost, Creator, and Morbid Angel. 
Oh man, really? oh man. Yeah, that's, I mean, Creator was still playing at least uh, Extreme Aggression and everything like that and Under. So that was good to see that era or whatever. And Paradise Lost, I was never a huge Paradise fan, but at least then they still had the death metal roots. And then obviously more of an angel with Covenant. It was just, it was ridiculous. Ridiculous. We had, we brought, actually, it's a funny story. We ended up uh, bringing up this one friend of ours. He was, uh, he did a lot of acid in high school, but he was a huge death metal fan. And, and he was a, the biggest Doors fan we ever met too, right? Really eclectic dude. So anyways, he was, he fucking loved death metal so much. And like literally every day he'd come to school on acid. So he would be down. He'd be down at the end of the halls, and you'd see him. You'd see him walking, cause you know, like just how druggies walk, right? Right? And <laughs> and uh, and we, literally, we, we'd yell out, we'd go, Adam, growl, a kilometer away, just start belting out screams and gurgles and cackles and all this. Like the guy's vocal range was insane. And then we brought him up to Morbid Angel, cause big fan, and Morbid Angel was having like a little pre-show. Um, so it wasn't really a pre-show, but they had like the soundtrack going for like 20 minutes, 25 minutes before they came on. It's just tribal drums and all this stuff. And he got in front of the speaker. He literally laid his head against the speaker and was like, he was speaking in tongues for 20 minutes. He was just ah, ah. <laughs> like, it was unbelievable. So that's my favorite Morbid Angel moment there. Yeah. Have you seen him live? Have you seen him live? Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And I'm, I'm envious that you caught Creator during that era. Um, you know, we 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 saw them a couple years back, and uh, they didn't play anything I wanted to hear. No. Nope. They wouldn't even let us in the aisles. They they like roped off the aisles and made people like herd into into rope, roped groups. Yeah, not, was, not, not very well. <laughs> and the tickets were eighty four dollars. <laughs> Yeah. What? Who else was playing that? Eighty-four dollars. Who else was playing that for eighty-four dollars? Sabaton. Ew. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> wow. Uh, I'm not. I, I mean, I like power metal and I like you know that sort of stuff. But yeah, Sabaton's definitely not my band. Uh, yeah, I ended up seeing Creator. Uh, they played with the. I think it was Napalm Death, that tour, it was a couple years ago or whatever. And like you said, man, I like Creator, but there's a point where it's like I just cut it off and nothing past that, which is pretty much like 94 and up. So literally, they played nothing, nothing old. And it was like, uh, it was the worst show for me. I, I, I'm not a fan of New Creator. I just don't get it. Cause, because be, cause they're, they're, they're trying the... Um, like accept, right? They're always trying for the chance nowadays too, and you know, yeah. uh, it's like, I, uh, no thanks, I'm good. But yeah, I caught I caught Creator on in in, in the good era, so uh, sucked in. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what kind of bands have you been listening to lately? Anyways, 
So uh, what do you, what's going on? Who's uh, who's who, who makes the riffs? Uh, we we all play a role in that. Um, you know, I, I write a good number of them, uh, but you know, J- Jake's a good uh, good guitarist as well. Um, and 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 more and more, we're getting uh, getting input from Violet on the riffs. Uh, so, you know, so she, she's bringing in a, a little bit of some some punk flavor into some of the stuff, um, which, which is cool. Right he's on. like a class music major, so he, he structures a lot of the songs and takes our like crazy riffs that don't go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, he's kind of protege, protege crazy riffs, and he just makes sense out of them, so works out. So you, just, <laughs> so you just kind of throw stuff at the wall, and then he picks it and picks the pieces out that he needs. <laughs> songwriting is like writing writing riffs like isn't the hard part uh writing riffs that fit together in a sensible way is is the real craft of songwriting um and and so it ends up being time consuming to work that way if you really want things to to fit together right um but but for me that that's actually the the game um when it comes to to making these songs is you know you can get the raw material from anywhere it's it's the craft of piecing that material into something meaningful. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, because I kept listening to I think you got four songs on Bandcamp or five. Right now. Uh, four four of the new one, yeah. Yeah. Um, I kept listening to it because it just like every time every time it, it all, like it started over, I was like, oh man, I never heard that riff before, and I never heard that part before, and oh man, that kind of goes together and stuff, and like. You can keep. I, I I kept listening to it. And I wasn't bored the whole time. So I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna say that to you guys. That's that was fucking awesome. Um, yeah, I was I was just being. Yeah, I was just you know heading in the computer. Blah blah blah. And then it was like it was like a half an hour later, forty five minutes. I'm like, wow. Like I'm not getting bored of these songs yet. Like this is this is pretty good. Well, that's that's an awesome compliment. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, man, for sure. I need to get a demo. Do you have any tapes and stuff like that? You got merch. Yeah, 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 a little bit. We'll send you stuff. Yeah, shoot, shoot us an address. Hey, hey, right on, right on. Not right now, but uh, later, later, later. <laughs> um, it's posted on the internet for everyone. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you just start sending me stupid shit. No, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> um, so what's in the future for you guys? We were supposed to do a tour, but, you know, with uh, this whole shit that's going down, uh, we had to postpone. Right. But, uh, so that, that probably means we're going to, you know, spend some more time on uh, writing and uh, hopefully getting a full length up, you know, sometime soon. So, yeah, we're, we're, we're a few songs in, at least. Um, and then, you know, this, this downtime is, is giving us, you know, although we're sort of like separated and can't really practice, it's at least giving us time to develop the riffs of material that'll, that'll go into that project. No, oh, for sure. For sure. Right on. Right on. So it's a, so it's a tight working band is what you're saying. We're pretty functional, like surprisingly. <laughs> <laughs> Considering. You know, like, try to practice every week and we drive two hours to practice because our the space is in Santa Ana and we got a whole tour together and now it's just all gone but yeah it was all DIY so of course that's that's what you have to do you gotta you gotta prove yourselves first right right totally totally um all right so who do you think started the growl who do you think was the first person to bring that vocal right to the, the growl? Uh, Dermot. <laughs> that, that's tricky. Uh, a lot of people like to say it was Dara, right? Um, I don't know, you got any other suggestions? Uh, first, Cultura. That can't be the first, right? <laughs> 
Exactly. Um, who was it? Uh, Enrique from uh, uh, Hideous Divinity. Uh, he said the same thing too. He was just like the first growl. You know what? It started in the blues era. So they started doing this stuff in the 40s, 50s, 60s, and it started getting rougher. And then there was a couple guys that were like, you know, actually kind of doing a growl in the background while they're enunciating things. I was like, Oh shit! Okay, well, if we're gonna go in that direction, <laughs> what else you got? <laughs> but a lot of people, obviously, a lot of people go with, you know, they start with Kronos and uh, Tom G, and then it goes to everybody saying Chuck, right? Um, what about like every, every, people? I'm, I'm finding people are forgetting uh, Killjoy. That's, I think that one's pretty impaired because like, that's like 84, 83, 84 and his vocals were a lot crazier. And uh, then you had Cam Lee with Mantis and he was belting out, he was belting out something a little heavier than even what Becerra did on uh, Seven Churches too, right? So do you go with those or do you go with like when, or was it like, like Bill Steer, right? Carcass. Yeah. Definitely like one of the low lows with like Lee Dorian too, right? So. Yeah, that, that's a thing too. It's like where it's like some of those guys that you mentioned, it's like, yeah, those are like pretty growly, but when did it really, like, really turn into that like juicy, like yep. Frank Mullen type? Like, you know, that that's what I want to know. Who was the first guy that did that, you know? Totally. And 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 then a lot of people go on with uh, with Chris Barnes, yeah. When he actually like turned it down, down. But but again, like like you're going back to to Lee Dorian and uh, Bill Steer, right? And that's like what eighty eight, where it was like like down tuned gore. So who knows? Who knows, man? Who knows? Um, you guys got any last words before we uh, before we sign out here? Uh, we got any? Uh, uh, I don't know if you guys want to type in uh, some links and stuff like that in the comments section or whatever like that, where we can grab stuff. But what do we got? Uh, check out our new EP on Bandcamp. It's on our uh, site, uh, Depraver. Um, yeah, there's tapes, shirts available. And thank you for having us. Yeah. Sweet. What time is it down there right now? You said it was like 4.30 or 5? Yeah. Right now, and I have to teach a class, so <laughs> thank you very much. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, that's perfect timing. Yeah, that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Well, thank you very much, everybody. For sure. And thank, thank you, you for thank you for tuning in. It's Depraver. Come on, check it out. We're going to be putting the links up. We've been sharing the shit out of all the links anyways, so... Make sure, support, this is what we got to do because we're all bored out of our trees right now. <laughs> Appreciate it. Awesome. Cheers, everybody. Cheers. I, hope, I hope to meet you guys very soon. I hope to meet you guys. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, you well you did say you were going to tour. Were, were, were you going to come close to the border, Buffalo, Rochester, or anything like that? Uh, not yet, but we, we'd like to. Yeah. Out to the East Coast sometime. Yeah. But we're we're playing like Pacific Northwest. Gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, you can only do so much at a time, right? I mean. Yeah. Because how? Well, because I mean, how far is it? Like you're at the other. You're at the other side of the country, almost. Right. Yeah. And yeah. We're still by a van, so like. We don't have one yet. Right. Yeah, that would help. Yeah. That little doesn't really care. <laughs> it doesn't at all. That's why I'm still doing this for free. 30 years later. <laughs> That's what it does. That's what the scene does for you. Yeah, just thumbs up. All right. Okay, well, hopefully we'll just get in cakes and not work. And we can just do that. Just forever. sell, just sell tapes. That's it. <laughs> just... <laughs> Sell enough tapes? Yeah, definitely, man. That'll definitely support your lifestyle. <laughs> <laughs> Buy tapes. 
Support life. All right. Thank you very much, guys. All right. All right. Yeah. All right. We'll talk to you later. Later. Yeah. <laughs> right on. Good times once again. Once again. How are you doing, everybody? I want to put shout outs. Shout outs to. Big time. Big time. There's another one too. Paul Speckman. Everybody forgets about Paul Speckman also. The guy's been doing this shit forever. Right? There's even stuff like that, right? Because a lot of these demos came out like... Like first it was Master. Then it went to Death Strike. And then it went back to Master. So, give it out to the Speckminator. Thank you, everybody. Cheers and beers, eh? That's what we do, buds. Pleasures.